The castle of the evil dead. Everybody, are you awake? Yeah. Yeah. Jason, nice to see April. I'm glad you made it. Nice. Wow. Okay, go. Hi. All right, so I'd like to start off by asking, when, when you were doing this movie, did you have any idea in your head that maybe years down the road, there'll be all this merchandise and toys and rooms full of all these people adoring us? I knew what was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I did it. We did, I, personally, I thought nobody was ever going to see it, and that was fine with me. I thought, well, you know, I'll do the wood scene because nobody's going to see and, it. And I actually hoped no one would see yeah. it. Yeah. I think yeah. that would be more what I felt like, God, I hope no one sees us. I remember a conversation around the kitchen sink in the house we were at. What do you think will happen? And the, the Consensus was if this plays, if Evil Dead or what, Book of the Dead plays in a theater and a drive in in Texas for one weekend, we can say we made it a theatrical film, you know, feature film. And of course, you know, years later, our weekends are shot doing these things. Meh. Nah. We've got to no. again. It lasted a week in a drive in in Michigan. And, uh, Oh, I don't know if we fulfilled that promise. Well, you know, I actually, now that you mentioned that, Tom, it really didn't last, and, and it's really just kind of resurrected in the last 20 years. It's entirely uh, because of the fans of the film. Yeah. Uh, it, mm -hmm. When it, its initial run, it made like two million in America, and that's like, not, that doesn't even pay for prints and release and stuff and advertising, the little they had. But um, uh, when, it, when VHS came around in video rental stores, it was the most stolen videotape, and it's one of those movies you see it. You've got to show it to somebody else, and uh, so it's you it's guys. It's all you made. guys. All right, yeah. there you go. Yeah. And that's, that's why there's sequels, comic books, plays, and now a TV show. And so to yeah. answer your question, no, we had no idea. Yeah. The the idea was to make this film so we could make a second film. You right. know, to this Sam gets his career going. Yeah, yeah. Right, Poor well, Sam. Let's get Poor the first official question from the audience. Right here. Do you guys going to have any cameos or anything in the Star Show? We don't know. We don't know. Well, we do, do know. know. We know a little bit. Sure. We know a little. Outtakes from the, from the original yeah. movie are being used as promotional clips. Okay. So there's a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in it. From might in a little see way. episode one. I don't know. Yeah. Just yeah. to. See. It looks like it's going to be really good, though. Yes. Has oh, anyone yeah. seen the trailers? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're funny. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great trailer. I just saw it today. Oh, you did? Yeah, on a guy's phone. Wait, wait, say that a little bit louder. Yeah, he would be surprised if they didn't ask us. We would, we would be surprised if they did ask. He'd be us. hurt, really? too. Yeah. He'd be hurt. Well. <laughs> <laughs> be that real cabin? Yes, yes, it was yeah. in, we, we were in Morristown, Tennessee, and it was an old abandoned cabin, and we spent the first week shoveling cow manure out of it. <laughs> and, I, and I mean we, all yeah. of us. Um, yeah, it was in Morristown, Tennessee. The only thing that was not shot in the cabin, it didn't actually have a real cellar. So the cellar shots were shot in, in Michigan. Where at? Marshall. Marshall. There, uh, the Tappert family at that time owned a farm uh, south of Marshall. We shot the basement stuff and some of the graveyard things there. And also uh, bits of the, uh, there's a scene where Ash is in the basement, he runs into you. That was shot at the... Uh, uh, no, that was in Sam Raimi's garage. Sam Raimi's gra Paris Paris garage. Paris garage. That they built a little set. and you know, they, uh, Some black object comes in, in front of the screen for a second and that's where the transition is.
That, that's the so magic of <laughs> movies. Yeah. That's Bloomfield Hills. Yeah, but it was a real cabin. Yeah, this and little, on a crawl square. space. And you Burned know the. Down. No, yeah. Burnt down Burned about down. six the months after we left. There. And in fact, th there's not much chimney left either cause no. be because of you guys going down there and stealing the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> We've signed many a rock. <laughs> Somebody was at a convention a couple of weeks ago. They said, Yeah, I just got this brick. It's from Morristown, Tennessee, where your cabin was. And we went, Okay. I yeah. thought the bricks were gone yeah. long yeah, ago. Yeah. They were they were stones. They weren't. They weren't I know. Brick. They were, yeah. Was it arson that uh, Some kids uh, started a fire in the middle of the wooden floor. It served a perfectly good working fireplace and burn it down, which is a real wow. shame. The uh, the um, chamber of commerce has been trying to purchase that la land from the woman who owns it, but uh, she just doesn't want people down there. You know, definitely no film crews. We tried. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. But like that cabin didn't really have a, a, a stairway going into the cellar. Yeah, they dug a hole and it's... The hole was about, four, about as deep as... Deep, yeah. Yeah, about four feet. I don't know. How far did you fall? Well, yeah. <laughs> Alan would know. So yeah, my, my favorite moment was, you know, we were wearing those contacts so we couldn't see. And I was already... I was already possessed and fighting with Bruce, and he's supposed to kick me in the face, and then I fall backwards into the cellar. That was me that kicked you in the face. Bruce was a wussy. He wouldn't he have kicked you in the face. He was stuck in the shell. Was it you? Ah, yeah. Oh. Thank God we yeah. had this Jeez. talk. Oh my God. All these years I've been thinking. <laughs> she's been blaming So Bruce. I had to fling myself back blind into a like four by four foot <clears throat> hole and fall back into the cellar. And so of course the first, you know, five tries, I threw myself back and slammed my head on the on the edge of the floor. Hence the reason but, she but has they no were, idea who kicked her. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but since there was no real cellar, they they dug a hole under there and some people were standing there with a blanket blankets. and catching me when I oh. fell back. That was fun. So, you done? Oh no, here's one. If you have one lesson in acting or filmmaking, in just in general, from the whole Evil Dead experience, what would it be? Don't, Don't do it. Do, do, do not ever lay on a table with a real working chainsaw over your neck. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know, try not to film in 10 degree weather. Yeah, bring a nice warm jacket when you're filming at four o'clock in the morning in 30 degree weather. In a nightgown. In a nightgown. Okay. Of course, I wore two nightgowns because it was really cold. <laughs> yes. Uh, I was just gonna ask about the, the pencil and the ankles. Woohoo! Ouch! Oh, I yeah. love that scene. That's really well, I, that is I, the best. I made a, a casting, a mold of Betsy's foot in that position. That's how clever a special effects guy was. <laughs> and so I uh, asked Sam, well, what position do you want? Is she going to be kneeling in and all that? And uh, it was a foam rubber leg, and I had a dowel rod going through it for some support. And I'd hollowed out the, the uh, ankle on the far side from the camera and put a blood balloon in it. And uh, being a you know, brand new special effects guy had forgotten that rubber is going to seal up around anything you stick in it. So when Ellen sticks the pencil in, and I only had one leg, so this is like a one take thing. <laughs> Sam, uh, she sticks the pencil in, and Sam goes, Where's the blood? We got to see blood. Grind it around. And she did. That's what's in the film. That's why it's so painful. <laughs> Being the high budget movie that it was, we only actually had one pair of brown corduroy pants. A lot of movies, when, if there's any you know, effects or stunts taking place, they have 5, 10, 15 pair of pants or a shirt or whatever in case somebody screws up. And we only had one pair of corduroy pants and we had to have it you know, work the first time. 
So we couldn't even take another pair of pants and cut the leg out. So in actuality, if they had pulled out in the camera, you would see my one leg in the pair of pants, but my other real leg was just dangling free form. <laughs> and then Tom was there, I hate to say, there in between my legs with his artificial leg. And it was, it was not a funny, not a pleasant thing to see. And a little, a little side note, that scene is Alice Cooper's favorite scene. Alice Cooper's favorite scene. <laughs> yeah. Speaking about costuming, there was, I don't know if this woman is here, but she came up to our table today she was, uh, her mother was working for Sam Raimi's mother who owned a lingerie store. Lulu's Lingerie. Lulu's Lingerie. And um, her mother was the one that was picking out the lingerie that was going to be in the movie. And she would go pick out like these Christian Dior things and, and Sam's mother would go, don't give him that, he just ruins everything. <laughs> <laughs> And we that did. was funny. <laughs> yes, right here. Was there any moment during production where you collectively as a group thought we have something special here? No. 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 <laughs> at the premiere, at the premiere, I, I knew this was a special film. I mean, it was really clear. The audience just loved it, uh, reacted just the way Sam had devised it tortured them at the right spots. Well, funny you got that feeling at the premiere. I was there with my parents. As was I. <laughs> Me too. I had no idea there was a little scene with Ellen in a tree. And uh, I was horrified. You had no idea? No. That that was not part of the, we didn't film that. Yeah, we filmed that, a lot of that stuff after, up in uh, North of Lansing. Yeah, right. later. Yeah, and, and, I, and then I, my I mother's remember going, nothing. Is this a movie? <laughs> yeah. So I didn't tell anyone about that movie for 20 years. Yeah, we all spent many years kind of trying to forget or denying. Or, yeah. And then we found out we couldn't do that anymore. So was there a point? When was the point that you realized oh, people like this movie? People really love it. A couple weeks it's ago. Not a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend. This weekend. Here. I would say like. <laughs> About like 15, 15 years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Was there a certain like a band? Well, well yeah, you know what? I, I first heard about it uh, in 2002 and I got a phone call from someone who said, hey, listen, we're going to put together a reunion of the Evil Dead uh, cast and crew and uh, we're going to meet here and then we're going to do a showing <clears> at this theater. And I go, oh, that sounds pretty cool. Okay, I'll go. And uh, went to this. I don't know, the production, uh, Anchor Bay, this office, and uh, they said, okay, we're gonna put you in a limo, and we're gonna, I go, wow, limo, how oh, cool, yeah, I like this. And then we got down to Royal Oak downtown, and there were people lined up all the way around the block, what was that? The, Royal. Royal, the main. The Royal, the main, the main. People lined all up around, all, I couldn't believe it, I had no idea. And then they did two showings, there were like five or 600 people at each one, that was incredible, yeah, incredible, because yeah. I saw the movie at the premiere, and then that was it. And then 20 years later, there's all these people, I'm watching the movie again. Right. Stunning. That's when I first heard. I was a brownie girl scout leader. <laughs> <laughs> and Does this surprise you? And, and, out of it, <laughs> and I was, we had, I was my co-leader, and I had taken our little girls to a restaurant, and we let them eat in a separate table. You know, that's big stuff. And uh, my girlfriend and I were sitting there, and when my kids were growing up, none of my friends knew that I had done any of this. Um, it's just not something that you talk about, you know, at a PTA meeting. And, um, <laughs> but we were at the other end of the restaurant, this was in the late 1990s, just before we met for Halloween. There were these teenagers, and you know how crazy teenagers can be, and they kept staring at me. Now, and they kept staring at me, and, stared, and they'd say something, and they would stare back at that, oh my God, they're going to come and like, mug me or take my menu or something. <laughs> and finally one of them stood up and they came over and said, here's a couple, what am I going to do? And they said finally, they said, um, excuse me, but do you happen to go by the name of Miss Betsy Baker? And I finally went, well, that depends. Why? Because <laughs> that's not my married name. Well, were you in a movie called Evil Dead? And my girlfriend, whom to this day, I can see her face, her name was Cindy, she goes, is there something you want to tell me? <laughs> 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 and 
And once I admitted to them and told them, then all four of them came over and they were just like, oh my gosh, we've seen this movie about 100 times. To which Cindy said, so start talking. <laughs> that was one of the first times. And there was a time in uh, Los Angeles where Teresa and I now live. Um, they had called and asked us to attend a screening of the new digi digitalized movie. Well, they Go didn't ahead. call. They, you called them. Because oh, absolutely not. No, they called me because they got my number from the Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay. So they said, would you like to attend this screening? And I thought it was a prank call, so I hung up. <laughs> and they call back, no, this really is, and do you know anybody else? And I said, well, I know Teresa. And so we went thinking, oh, it's going to be at a little tiny theater, nobody will be there. And again, the lines were around the block, and we had no idea. So it was, <laughs> I mean, a lot of us, were, we were just doing our careers and, and working and raising some of us were children. Raising kids. And, you know, if you did go to a video store, if you were raising children, you didn't say, Hey kid, let's go over to the horror section. <laughs> we just didn't do or, that, so I had no idea. Okay, in the back in the blue. Now, you told me, Tom, about your experience with makeup, with like how you're able to, like, you live in like about a couple days or so, but for a stop motion animation, you told me that it takes like three months to do two minutes of the film for stop motion. Why do you think that long? Uh, well, Tom's really slow, and you're going to see from his <laughs> response to that question just how slow he can be. <laughs> well, actually what it was was the approach that we took. Uh, I made clay replicas of, uh, of Cheryl and Scotty's characters, and uh, uh, the idea was that I had a pencil, and I would lightly tap all over the thing, you know, certain spots, and that takes a couple of minutes, and then click, and what we'd actually do is film, we'd click twice, the cameraman would then put the camera in reverse, cover the lens, go back a frame. So we double exposed each frame and he never screwed up once. It was amazing. Wow. Bart Pierce did that. And uh, <laughs> but the thing was is this tapping, usually on a stop motion model, you're just bending a couple of things. It doesn't take long. But when you're doing this on a head and hands and everything, it can take a while. Plus the double exposed thing that we also I had live uh, stop motion parts of the film, so we had a mat and matted out like the head of, uh, of Cheryl, the, the deadite. And uh, we would do the clay animation of the face and then have rewind the camera, change the mat so the face is blacked out and we're filming the hair and have live action hair and bile dripping down. And uh, to, to make it look just more natural and, and realistic and everything. So that took a long time. Plus there's about 30 shots and uh, Bart Pierce worked at a uh, photographic place. Uh, he could take the film and have it processed and bring it home that night, which was really uh, useful. But uh, I would stay there and set up a shot for a day or two and create it, and then when he had time, we'd, we'd, we'd actually shoot the thing. And, but that went on for three and a half months. We also did some extra pickup shots and, and such like that. Yeah, it, it's a lot of work. Ray Harryhausen would take a year or so to do uh, his five creatures per movie kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it just, it's just a long process. I know it is. It's really good. So Thank you. Slow. You're great. <laughs> Thank you. He is great. He is great. Hey, Tom. <laughs> and as I said, from the length of his answer, you can tell that it took a long time. <laughs> More questions? Yes, in the past. Uh, was there any scene that you guys were like, I gotta get the hell out of here. What am I doing here? This is oh, yeah. She's your girlfriend. I'm getting the hell out of here. She's your girlfriend. You take care of her. I'm getting the hell out of here right now. Here. She's your yes. girlfriend. How about when we drove across the bridge? We had just kind of gotten down there. We didn't really know what these guys were like. And they have us get in this car, driving across a bridge, and they're move, removing planks as we're driving across. No. That's when I, I said, this is kind of scary. This is the bridge we're gonna cross. Jesus Christ, the whole thing's falling apart on us. Don't let the noise fool you, girls. This thing is solid as a rock. <laughs> then we found out later that the bridge was actually going to be destroyed by the state of Tennessee. I think two days later. So. Oh, I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the scene after scene in yeah. that movie would not be allowed today in a union. Oh film. yeah. Yeah. Um, many things were done that 
were very dangerous. But yeah, I, I certainly wanted to leave when I was doing the wood scene in the middle of the night over and over and over again. And <laughs> Unless they put up with the makeup that oh, they went yeah. through and the yeah. make face castings and all that, because uh, it, it had been explained to what what's going, to, you know, what, what it, the process involves. But they're all kind of claustrophobic, as I remember. Yeah. So it's really uncomfortable to have stuff on your face when that's uh, kind of a problem. So the behind the scenes footage Matt shows that you guys look really uncomfortable when you're doing multiple takes and multiple takes. So. Well, we were uh, the cabin had no electricity. No running water. No heat. No heat. It's like a fireplace. It's cold. And no toilet. Yeah. So, so oh, and no did plumbing. we mention that we were blind while we were doing this? Yeah, yeah so we couldn't see. <laughs> um, it, it went on for months longer than we had anticipated <coughs> being there. And, but, you know, I was 20, yeah. 21, so it was, it was still kind of fun, even though it was miserable. <laughs> Yes. Go ahead. Well, you guys keep talking about how you uh, kind of try to forget the film and whatnot. Um, do you enjoy horror movies in your personal time? Do you guys have like favorite horror movies, or do you guys just do this for fame? Well, if Mary Poppins counts as a horror movie, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the only, I think the the three of us, no, not at all. Yeah. I, I think I, you guys are. I'm a big time yeah. horror fan. I grew up with guys that are you may know of but they're they're long since deceased um, but I love them all well I was I, there were two movies that I that I mean I, I like the Frankenstein movies with Boris Karloff and Wolfman with uh, Lon Chaney Jr. but the, when it got to my favorite ones well, of course like Godzilla and I like King Kong the older ones um, my two favorites are King Kong versus Godzilla, <laughs> and the Wolfman meets Frankenstein. Put, they put my people together in the same movie, yeah. and I, I love those movies. Uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon was a great one for me. Um, I kind of lost interest when we turned into Freddy Krueger, and it was uh, people just killing people. Or, I know Freddy wasn't a person, but uh, like Michael Myers is killing people. And I have a little difficulty with like what could actually happen with real people as opposed to the Wolfman. Come on, is there a Wolfman? Is there a Frankenstein? Come on. So those are my films. I saw King Kong when I was five and it was all over. Mom, did they make that film in America? I said, well, that's what I want to do. Aww. And uh, so I you know, started playing with dinosaurs and make my little panoramas and things. <laughs> And, uh, uh, and experimented with stop motion and all that little dinosaur stuff. But uh, uh, I, that same era, you know, I, I love the universal monsters and all that. But I didn't really find them scary. I thought they were more interesting. But I was oh, yeah. more on the, uh, the, the spectacle side of film. I loved the special effects in King Kong and other things. So I'm always looking for matte paintings and miniatures and all that. Um, and uh, but horror films that today, like the, the change that you know, where the Michael that's killing people, and I'm not a big fan of women as victims in films. It's, I'm just kind of I like the kick-ass women a lot more. Yeah. And, and um, <laughs> uh, uh, you're pandering, Tom. But uh, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed the Saw films, oh, I know. you know, a lot. Because like, he had a social. He was actually trying to show people where you've gone wrong in life. <laughs> Or before you take this thing, it's going to crack your head open. I think this one is, yeah. yeah. news for you, then. They, they're talking about redoing Godzilla vs. King Kong. Oh. It's, no, a, it's, it's a hoax. hoax. Yeah. It's a but, hoax. But uh, there's a book out, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago called The Evil Dead Companion, where they went yeah. into great detail yeah. about how Sam Raimi tortured you guys there, basically. <laughs> well, that, that's true, then, I'm just taking that. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 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 Well, you uh, I guess that's torture. I, I, I slept with Tom's makeup on me 
overnight because we, we did a, we shot a scene and I think uh, I think when I was dying on the couch um, we I don't know uh, maybe it took three hours to do that scene At you know least. do the cuts you know and all that I mean first it was three hours of makeup then it was three hours of doing the scene and then it says okay uh, Hal take a break and I need you back here in about, uh, you know, at six o'clock. And I was like four hours later or five hours later. So I slept in a lounge chair and a, and a lazy boy with my feet up and my arm broken and a stick coming out of my ribs. <laughs> that that kind of torture. <laughs> now come on, listen to me, for God's sake. Is there a way around the bridge? There's a way. The trail. But the trees, Ash. Hey, no. Don't you see, Ash, they're alive! <laughs> there was a torture of peeling ourselves up off of the frozen wooden floor with Carol syrup. Yeah. That was torturous. Oh, yeah, that was torturous. Mr. Quill. Right I did that there. on purpose. You can see his head's no longer shaved. <laughs> <laughs> so, Steve, do you want to run the train? Yeah. Well, yeah. you have some other questions. Yeah, I've got another guy say. back there or something. Would you get. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Stand up because we can't hear you. You're talking in the back of that guy's head. All right, so anyways, Tom? Yeah, you're standing up? Oh, there you go. All right. Well done. Uh, not, uh, I had done a, uh, I had a small Halloween mask company with glue-on appliances, you know, with rubber cement, or not, uh, spirit gum, rather, rubber cement. <laughs> and um, uh, so I, had, I used. had some basic skills in mold making and slush latex. I hadn't done uh, the foam latex pieces because that's expensive stuff at that those things. But there was a magazine called Cinemagic published by Don Dohler, and it was uh, for Super 8 um, filmmakers, and it was all this special effects stuff, how to do molds, stop motion animation, how to rewind your Super 8 cartridge so you could do mats and things. And um, uh, I had about five issues of that with me and uh, Richard Corson's uh, theatrical makeup book. And I probably should have read them a little closer, but uh, so but these folks were basically my experimental subjects. And, uh, <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I really regret all the torture. Eh, he can paint Tom, on a good Tom Bruce. Tom was very sweet, though. Tom was our was basically our Big care, sister. our caretaker. Mm -hmm. So he, yeah. he would really look Took out care of for us, us and. Yeah. Hey Tom! Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, it was rough, and I was kind of the arc between Sam and, and the ladies. So I. You know, <laughs> Yeah. But it, it was it was a tough shoot. It was really tough. But what I liked about it is we were all friends there, you know, became friends there. No jerks, no screw ups, no divas, you know, everybody just pitched in and yeah. got it done and we <laughs> cracked it. And that's up. really that was really the thing about this movie, that it was a real um, united effort and we and we just had a Sam was our visionary and we all did whatever he told us. And it was a united effort. It was yeah. And really Sam isn't a you know dictatorial yeller screamer. He was you know collaborate and worked on a it collaboration. And everything. But yeah. you know he's also brand new to this kind of filmmaking, so it was a little rough. Before you, you when you make your your home made, made movies, you can just shoot an hour a day here and there, pick up shots when people are available. But when you're all stuck in a location, and they took us down to Tennessee because they thought if we we're in Michigan, we might escape. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, go back home. Yeah. Would you guys like to have a little fun? Wait, wait, with this guy's, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, I keep interrupting you, but it's okay. I just have one more question. Um, he was wetting his pants, and waiting to answer this, ask this question. <laughs> Don't wet your pants. Um, could you give, other than not to get into business, could you give young filmmakers, actors, or uh, special effects uh, personnel any suggestions on uh, things to do to break into business? Well, nowadays, I would say, for, f from the acting perspective, there's so much media. Um, you can access the media in a way that we never could with YouTube and putting together little shorts and things that people will see. I think that's the way to go. 
because you if it gets hits and people start seeing it and you can experiment and you don't have to spend a lot of money I I mean of course tr get trained and know what you're doing but then put it together yourself you know yeah. I heard uh, an, an advice about filmmaking is don't go to Hollywood you, you don't want to make a movie there trust me you set up on a street corner hot dog vendors will walk 10 blocks and say, hey, I'm here every day, you're costing me $500, so pay up or, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, so make movies where you live, make Hollywood come to you. But for uh, effects artists and stuff, uh, there's, I had those five magazines and that was about all that was out there for how to do this stuff. Now you can go on YouTube and uh, Monster Makers, a terrific makeup company, has videos on every kind of topic from teeth to eyes, the makeup, the casting. And uh, so put your stuff together, learn how to sculpt and draw. The more skills you can bring, the, the better chances you have you know, for more jobs you can do. And um, uh, come up with a portfolio uh, and bring them to horror film conventions just like this one, because there are filmmakers. If you just want to do effects and haven't really done them yet, there's still somebody looking for you. They just need people to do stuff. And um, these are amazing places to network. Uh, they truly are, and you've also got Facebook and, in, like you said, any number of ways to get your word out there. But uh, uh, but go for it, you know. Are there any uh, makeup schools that you would personally endorse? Uh, I hear maybe? really good things about the Tom Savini School, yeah. and there's a, there's a number of them. The graduates of that school have always impressed me, and they get a good work ethic too. Do you guys want to have a little fun? We know you love this movie so much that. Yeah. Um, you probably know it better than we do. So we have uh, some lovely photos of three lovely ladies, and we'll autograph these for you. But you have to win. So um, we thought we'd do, people always have their favorite line from the movie. So we thought we'd um, invite you to do your favorite line and let the audience decide um, who's best. So we'll take four favorite lines. Who wants it? You've got a favorite line? Yes, she does. Okay, come up here. Come up right here. So we'll get. We'll have you do it, and then you stay here, and then at the end, everybody can decide by okay. clapping. Okay, anybody else? Do not let her be the only one. Right up here. Stand up here. There's two. Uh, there's three. We need one more. One, one more. more. One more. Let's go. One more favorite line of the movie for those out there who've seen it. Come on, Tim, you times. remember a line, Sorry, don't you? Three. All right, three's good. Three's yeah, good. Three's good. Better. All right. Okay, okay, let's start. Step with up to the front, face your audience. What's your name? Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, Sarah, come on over here. Come on up here in the center. Okay. At one, you what line really you're going to do for us? She'll do it. She'll okay. do it. Face <laughs> so the. Is it your sister, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> Center stage, buddy. You're all gonna die tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're all gonna, gonna die tonight. tonight. You're all gonna die tonight. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Sarah and Steve. And who's our third contestant? Jason. Jason's gonna go right to the center stage, folks. Hold on to this one. Oh, you bastards! Why are you torturing me like that? <laughs> Why? <laughs> all right. So Steve, stay up there. Jason, stay up there. All right, here we go. We're gonna first, I wanna hear applause for Jason, then Sarah, then Steve. Here we go, let's hear a round of applause for Jason. Jason. And now our sweet Sarah. And we have suspicious Steve. Well, I think, yeah, it's a tie. I gotta tell you, although Sarah, you really knocked it out of the ballpark. Knocked it. <laughs> All right, Sarah, come back and we'll autograph it for you later. Awesome. Thank you. Congratulations. And for a great <laughs> Thanks for coming up. Thank you. We, 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 right. we have no losers here. <laughs> no losers. No, all the losers are up here. Can um, can I I'm surprised that nobody wanted to do the Betsy laugh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, can I? I still think do. We, I think we need a little laughing. Linda. Do we have anybody that wants to try? We could give you some more pictures that we have. I, I have a, I have a line. They're my favorite line that I thought of. 
Okay. Well, we did the line. <laughs> All right, well, let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. Go ahead. Okay. Well, Lila, be peace. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Yeah, Teresa was right. We did the other yeah, people. Yeah. <laughs> but we could take three or four people and see who can do the laugh. And <laughs> now, All right. the laugh? maybe we should just let. I think maybe. <laughs> should we coax? Gives me the creeps. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. You're okay. welcome. I'll stab your ankle well, again. Ow. Well, you're all done. Uh, all done. I asked this gentleman, the MC. Adam? Yeah. Had enough? No, I'm good. Here's a, oh, we got one oh. more question. Okay, well, thanks so much for coming today. <laughs> great seeing all of you. We really had a good time. Let me ask you, what did you think of the remake? Horrible. I think that, I know speaking for the three of us, um, we thought it was okay, but it lacked in humor, certainly, and it wasn't scary. Um, it was mostly blood and guts and gore and a lot of nice looking young people. <laughs> Technically, it's a sequel, it's not a reboot. It's a new group of people dealing with the phenomena, and Fetty, they, they interviewed directors and Fetty's um, approach was in the real world how would people deal with this and uh, so he took all the humor out of it and everything because Sam does that great well wait wait and they he wanted did. a new approach towards it the, uh, there is humor there is slaps I call it slapstick horror and that's when the uh, our heroine is underneath the pickup with a chainsaw and cutting off legs of a zombie. I mean, that's that was hilarious. Or the guy that when it died, he was like getting mutilated and shot. So then it's like, oh. But the good news is the TV show looks like it's going to be coming back to the humor. Yeah, definitely. Yep. So, and it has Bruce in it. So. Yeah. Anybody seen the musical? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> That's pretty times. funny. Yeah. <laughs> the TV show. The yep. TV show. Yep. It's yep. in production. It comes out in the end of October. They wrapped already. Yep. Yeah, Halloween. Yeah. So, yeah. We loved the musical. We thought it was the best the thing yeah. ever. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Funny. Not to be Did you guys cameo in the all ever? Pardon me? What do you think about the sequels, Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness? Um... I thought they were hilarious. I mean, to me, since I'm not a horror fan, the humor makes it for me. The humor makes it worth seeing. Um, and also, I, you know, I, I've known Bruce Campbell since we were 16, and so I just get a kick out of seeing him do anything. Yes. How, how did you guys actually get into? Well, I think real quickly we can just each say, I, I was actually living in Detroit and working, um, doing auto shows, this lovely Buick here, 1978. But anyway, um, <laughs> and I auditioned for Sam and Bruce and Rob, but the, the, my talent agent said, eh, I don't know about these guys, and <laughs> we're not going to have auditions held here at the agency, but they've agreed to meet you at Pasquale's restaurant at 14th and Woodward. So I went there and had a Coca-Cola with them. And then they said, would you like to come over to my house and read a little scene? So and that's, that's how I did it. Um, I, as I said, I, I went to high school with Bruce and Sam and a lot of other movie making people. And um, I was in some of their old Super 8 movies and then I was in the vehicle that they used to, to sell investors on the Evil Dead, which was called Within the Woods, which was fun because I got to, Bruce was the monster and I got to be the survivor who killed him off. So that's, that's how I, and you know, I was 
in college and they said, hey, you want to come make a movie? I said, sure. How cold was that water and within the woods when you had to go oh to the swamp? Oh my God. Within the Woods was just as much torture as yeah. the Evil Dead. Right. And, and I think the reason they hired me was that they saw that <laughs> I would do anything. I mean, I ran through a swamp in that, that I have diseases to this day from Ew. that swamp. Ew. We won't discuss. <laughs> That's what's wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa? I auditioned. I was um, like Betsy doing auto shows and commercials in Detroit. You were a comedian too, weren't you? I did that after Evil She's Dead. She's still funny. I stopped. I said I'm never going to do another movie again after this because I was having nightmares. And uh, there was comedy uh, popping up all over Detroit probably before your time. But um, so I just started working at the comedy clubs after Evil Dead. Did stand up for a while. And you were the uh, voiceover for Ellie McBeal. Oh yeah, I, I did a lot of voice work, a lot of promos, for trailers, um, for a lot of TV shows. Yeah. And, yeah. Tonight, Ellie McBeal Tonight. kisses a girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I auditioned. I, I got invited to audition, uh, and at the, the first invite I declined, I didn't want to do it. And then uh, about a month went by and I got invited again, and uh, the, uh, the hook for me was a friend of mine had already auditioned and had won a role in the movie. So I said, well, that's cool. Greg's, all right, I'll, I'll go audition. So um, on a Sunday night in the basement of Sam Raimi's parents' house, I sat on a chair much like this with uh, Sam and Bruce and Rob and uh, who else, I don't know who else was there, but just arranged like we're in a car and uh, had to do whatever, you know, read this and, uh, let me hear you die. I want to hear you die like you're, 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 it's coming out from inside you. So I did. And then I, I, from rumor has it that Sam liked the way I died, so I got the part. <laughs> but in so doing, I bumped my buddy out. So he was out of the movie and I was in. <laughs> Happy ending for me. Business out there, folks. <laughs> Back in my married days, uh, my wife went to, uh, M we went to MSU so she could go to take journalism classes, and I heard about the MSU Filmmaking Society, which Sam and his brother had put on. Uh, they found you could rent auditoriums like this size for 30 bucks, a big, get a big deal if you were a student to help uh, encourage student-led activities. And they would show his Super 8 movies and charge like a buck or two, which you could find that in you know, soda cans uh, if you kept your eye open for the week. And uh, they'd make enough money to buy a pizza, and then we'd go over to their house and smoke pot and talk movies. <laughs> and, um, what? Uh, then when uh, Eve, then w w within came, the woods came along, I had my you know enough stuff to demonstrate I might be able to handle makeup. And I know they checked out other people, but I was affordable, so you could work for almost nothing. And uh, that just led on to other things. And the acid test was within the woods, and that worked out pretty good. And uh, so. Evil Dead. When that, after a year later, uh, they'd raised the eighty grand to get us started on the film, and uh, we went down there and turned it out. It was Rest is history. Yeah. Huh? I, I think uh, Sam Sam since we stand up guy. I know he came back uh, when the film was were bribing and shot the Oz movie here, Pontiac. Um, uh, does everyone still have a working relationship with Sam? Or? Well, the three of us were in it. They us. were in it. So, yeah. yeah, I would say we, we do. It was wonderful to, I don't. to hang out with him <laughs> uh, doing the, the contrast from the movie that we made with Evil Dead to Oz was just surreal, seeing him, you know, run a, a $200 million budget movie uh, versus what we did with this. It was surreal. I did a second Fun. movie with, uh, with Sam uh, about three years after the Evil Dead and uh, came out as... Uh, crime wave um, and it was probably I mean I, I've, I've seen it since and it's probably the worst movie I've ever seen <laughs> there's a lot of those it's, it's actually oh no yeah. well no no doubt I mean, you can they can publish it all they want however they want to distribute it uh, yeah <laughs> final questions before we end all right. Okay, good. Thank Thanks, you everybody, so for much coming. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks, Adam.